Are you ready for change? <laughs> yeah? Are you ready for change? What we're going to do, we're going to start off with a presentation. This presentation will be with Tobias, Tobias Billenstein. And I said that I was going to try and pronounce the name of his company in German, <laughs> Genossenschaft Deutscher Brunnen. Yeah? In other words, German mineral water companies. And Tobias is the Director of Public Affairs, Sustainability and Communications, and he will be telling us how to make safe and sustainable packaging work in the real world. We're not interested in some other planet. <laughs> We're in this real world. Okay. So please, Tobias, over to you. Well, yeah, well, thank you very much. And yeah, the idea is now to take you on a 20-minute perforce right through the world of reuse. Um, so, so the background here is, is um, um, if you hear um, a cooperative, actually we are running probably Europe's biggest um, reuse bottle system. Um, we are an old company, 85 years. We are doing the reuse system nationwide already since more than 50 years. So... Um, that's us, we are headquartered in Germany, and we are a rather small company. And to give you, just for the start, some numbers, I, I will not read it everything out, just some basics, and, and you can study the numbers in detail later on. If many people hear Germany and they think of Germany as the reused country, but the reality is, in beverages, it's only 42%, um, which is compared to most other countries in the world pretty much, but I think there's space for more. Um, and the second important number is our return rate. This is a good number, it's 99.4%. So the re reusable bottles, 99.4% of them are coming back and are refilled. Um, our system has more than 1 billion bottles and more than 100 million crates in the market. And um, this sums up to, to around about 300 million um, euros in deposit value. It's a little bit more if you buy the bottles. Um, and to give you a last number, um, um, last year we filled more than 6 billion bottles. And it's a system consisting of more than um, 160 companies. Most of them are regional and um, they, are, they are spread all over the country. Now, and the question, of course, is how are we managing this? How are we doing this? And, and I try to explain this to you in three steps. We take a look at, at what's, how's the reuse system actually working, how are we managing this, and some further considerations, which I call, well, the frequently asked questions, and then I would like to take a look with you on, on how can we apply what we know to, to other products and countries. Okay, um, now the reuse system. How does this actually work? And it's a circle. And it starts with the producers where they wash the bottles and immediately refill them. I had a talk um, just when we had a coffee don't you have washing plants? No, it's integrated. Washing and filling happens at the same place. Why? An average um, um, beverage filling line, has, it's, it's 15,000 bottles per hour. You can't wash them and then transport them and then fill them at a different place. It's, it would make no sense and it will also pose some problems in hygienic terms. After filling, in Germany, we have um, wholesalers who collect, um, a, a wholesaler has more than 2,000 beverages on average, and he is distributing them to the supermarkets, beverage markets, and so on. And then it's with the consumers. They bring, they buy, they drink it up, they return it. And for German consumers, it's an ordinary thing to do. They know how to do it. And then, this, um, 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 reverse logistics are exactly the same. And the retailers and the gross retailers, they play a very important role here because it's not only one bottle in the market, it's several bottles. And they, they are doing a pre-sorting, that the right bottle comes to the right bottler. 
So it's a defined system that we know who is working there. So that's why I'm talking about a defined set of stakeholders. But in reality, it's a double circle. Because what happens after a glass reuse bottle has been refilled for about 50 times? That's the average. A PET bottle is refilled for about 20 times on average. Of course, it's recycled. And the news here, or, or, or the point here is, our recycled bottles, or, or uh, our recycling materials, they are of high value, value because they are pre-sorted, even in colors. And so there are a lot of other players in the market to try, for example, to get our PET, which is of, of a very, very good quality. So this is the double cycle of reused bottles. And that's the key ingredient whenever you think about reuse. There is this cycle, and you just saw it, it's maybe a bit complicated. To consumers, it has to be as simple as possible. And whatever you do in reuse, we have to make this system as easy and as simple as possible, otherwise it will not work. We just had this discussion also earlier today about loop, where you had to um, send back your containers. This, this will never work. No. In Germany, it's usually at the point of sale where you return the bottles, and that's it. Easy, simple. And the second secret, um, if you think about reuse, it's not the packaging. It's a system. And this is also very important Remember the circle, remember the players. This is not just the packaging, it's a whole system. And that's very important to understand if you think reuse. And this is actually also what we tell any politicians. If they say, we want to do an easy regulation here, and we say there's no easy regulation in the system. And I think someone mentioned today, being also a system expert, it's, it's, it's really complex. Okay, so this is the system. Now, what are we doing here as GDB? Are we managing the system? To understand what we are doing, we have to take a look at, at what kind of bottles do we have. I brought one of our bottles, and I have it here. You can take a look at it. First, I say, okay, this is glass, but it could be also PET. And cans is more uncommon, but actually there are, I am aware of two startups working on steel, not for beverages, but other stuff on, in reuse. So maybe in future we will also see other materials. And second question is, is this reuse or is it single use? This is a reuse bottle. I can read it on the label. I have this wonderful example here. This, I think it's a single use bottle. I tried to find out by visiting their website. Not very good. <laughs> um, i tell you later on why. But, and then the next question is, if it's reuse, is this a branded bottle or is it a pool bottle? And a pool bottle is a bottle that's used by many companies. It's the same bottle. The only difference is the label. And the final question is, is this a managed or an unmanaged pool? Also, but the unmanaged version means just everybody is using the same bottle, but they have no coordination there. And this is actually a dying system. The existing unmanaged pool, at least in Germany, they are just transformed to be also managed. And to all these stages, there are many questions associated. I will not read everything out here. I just want to make you aware of, of many questions and issues associated to each of these questions. If you put yourself in the situation of a producer, it's a good question. Do we want to do reuse or do we, are we going to do single use? It's another question. Do you want really to use the same packaging as your competitors? That's the question if you are doing pool bottles. And that's actually our job as GDB. We have a managed pool system of standardized bottles. And the point here is, 
one of our tasks is to manage also cooperation among competitors, which is not always easy. If I say standardized bottles, it's not one bottle. We have different bottles, different sizes. Um, it's PET and it's glass. It's, if it's for PET, we have, to, um, um, we have bottles only for mineral water. We have those for, for soft drinks. So it's, it's many variations. And we need these variations because we want to be relevant with reuse for any situation of consumption. Half liter, one liter, on the table at a dinner, at sports, and so on. These are all the consumed situations you can imagine, and it should be doable always with a reusable bottle. And this is actually, and I think you will find here many touch points to what you are doing here, part of our management. Of course, we have a legal framework, framework um, on the EU level and the national level um, about food safety and so on and so on. But below that, we have a set of standards that are agreed on all our users. So we have a technical committee, we have a business committee, and they take decisions. For example, sorting criteria. You can see here this ring, which is a scuffing ring, how we call it, because it's the touch zone of the bottles when they are filled. We have a definition. If this ring has a certain size, the bottle will be ejected. How many bottles in percentage of filling per year should be replaced in order to keep the quality high? This is a very important question, and it has an... Um, marketing this in because the bottles should always look nice. It has an economic dimension and so on. Of course, we have a lot of quality questions. Which labels, which glue for the labels in order to wash them? Um, inspection, machines for inspection. We have, especially in the PET reuse bottles, we, we have, a, um, 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 as GDB, we approve each device. If it's not approved by us, it can't be used within our system. Because again, it's all the different companies using the same system, so we have to have a certain level of quality that's relevant for all of them. And so on. And actually, this part, we don't want to have a state-regulated standard on this field, because we, as industry, we feel that we are better equipped with all the experts out there, to manage this instead of a state regulation. I, I get very often calls, who's actually setting here the standard? Is it the national government or the state government? No, it's not the government, it's the industry with the experts under a legal framework. So are we managing the system? No, we are part of the reused system and we are managing our pool, our bottles. So we are managing what's manageable by us. And the rest is coordination within the system. That's also negotiations. That's a lot of talks. But it's also an established partnership. Some other stuff. Um, what's trending here in Germany? Actually, the trend of the last two or three years is we have a lot of new companies doing reuse, but not in beverages, but in food. One example is they are using a long-established pool system for dairy stuff, milk and yogurt. But now they are filling rice, nuts, and so on. We have a system of, for cosmetics, soaps. It's perfectly fit to be returned in the reverse mending machines for beverages, and it works. And um, the other stuff, and I don't have pictures here because it, it would take too long, we have the whole sector for Horeca, for to-go food. 
and there's a state regulation coming uh, 1st of January next year, every store has to have an offer for reuse to go. And this is, of course, a driver for innovation. And here we see new stuff. We see PP coffee cups. So it's not PT, it's not glass anymore. In this field, we will see one company doing steel for food. Very interesting. If you go to India, you will know it, because there they have these systems. But it's, that's not an organized system. In Germany, we are going to see this as an organized pool system. Another issue I'm very often asked, is, what about this one bottle for different brands? And this picture just wants to explain you three bottles, three brands, totally different in their setup, one bottle. It's doable. What about the costs? Actually, also, this, this was a huge study based on empir empirical data, and it was actually not meant to be presented in this way. Actually, we wanted to set up a calculation tool for our members in order to, to do economic analysis. But one of the side effects was I had a nice table showing that you actually can run a reuse system at the same cost level as a single-use system. And most people always assume, no, reuse must be um, um, more expensive. It's not. It depends how you operate the system. Of course, there are many factors. Pool systems are easier to manage and so on. So, so we could discuss this more than an hour or maybe also two. But the gist here is it's doable on the same cost level. Also, a topic that could be discussed for days is reuse always better in terms of an LCA than single use. And that's a difficult one. Um, and, and two words on LCAs in principle. Actually, I'm not a big fan of what we currently, or what we have seen in the past decades on LCAs, because actually they were always kind of abused in politics. Because the goal was not to find out are we good or not. The goal was only to find some proof for direct uh, um, a regulation in one or the other direction. And that's not why we are doing LCAs in the end. For us, LCAs are actually interesting to learn what could be done better. Where are, what can we optimize in order to be more environmentally sustainable? And that should be an LCA. But so, so the instrument of LCAs is, is really a hot topic. But if I take a look at all the LCAs of, of the past decades, I can definitely say, of course, nowadays, if you have a return rate of 90%, or in Germany, 99% for a single-use PET bottle, and you're applying all this PET to, to, um, in a circular way, it can be on the same level as a, glass, uh, as a regional glass reuse system. Whatever you do, a single glass bottle can be never sustainable, even if it's fully recycled. It's too heavy. It's too much energy you use to produce it. And on the other hand, a PET reuse bottle will be always the best in terms of carbon footprints. That's what consistent all LCAs showed in the past decades, no matter who ordered it. Um, and one conclusion for us is no matter what system we are running, we have to get it right. And there are some options that are maybe not the best. One more word. Um, oops. Um, is reuse always the best solution? If I take a wine bottle and I put it in my cellar because it's a very good Bordeaux and I leave it there for 10 years, it's maybe not the best option. Also, not in environmental terms. If it's a glass bottle and I'm using it for a wine that will be, and the bottle will be refilled in the next year, it's a good option in economic terms and in environmental terms. So, so even the same bottle could be more interesting or less interesting. So it's a really complicated thing. Okay, and, and 
we could translate this also to all other reuse stuff for foods and so on. It's not always clear that reuse is a better solution. We learned about the sachet economy today. They are, have a problem, in, but, but for some stuff, in some connection, it could be the better solution than a real solution. And we really have always to take a decision and to look at all the variables to, in order to take a good decision. What's actually our challenges as GDB? Actually, my biggest job currently is get the whole pool system climate neutral. And that's my goal until 2030. And that's a huge job. And Pella said this morning, I will not talk about digitization, and I won't, <laughs> too. Because it definitely will change the game, but I, it's, it's not clear yet. It's predictable that it will have influence, but I can't tell you exactly what at this point. And now these are my two last slides. Um, actually, whenever we discussed reuse in the past year, uh, uh, years, I, I tried to develop something like an algorithm to take good decisions on how to enter in reuse. Or, and, and definitely one and most important question is always how fast is this good moving? The faster it is, the shorter the shelf time, the more interesting the reuse becomes. That's one of the reasons why beverages are actually first choice for reuse. Is it really sustainable in all dimensions? I think this is also an important question. Is it social um, sustainable? Is it economic sustainable? And is it environmentally sustainable? Also, this is a question of balance. Is it scalable? Pool systems are always a good choice to think about scalability. And is it easy to handle? I told you simplicity is really key. If we have great ideas for reuse, but they are not easy to handle, it makes no sense. Yeah, and if you are introducing or if you are going to the market with your own ideas, always make a clear distinguish uh, between what's the system and what's the part you are managing. That's very important because Whatever you do in reuse, you will always work with partners in retail. You will work with partners, maybe in washing, because we are going to see more diversity in the reuse market, washing facilities and so on. It's always a system and you will always dependent, be dependent on partners. And that's it. And if you have questions, never forget to ask us. We are happy to discuss it. <laughs>